One of the highlights of this year's Melbourne Documentary Film Festival is a film called Green is the New Black. And it's my great pleasure to be speaking to the producer and co-director of Green is the New Black, Jake Taylor. Jake, welcome to Movie Metropolis. It's good to be here. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, at last. We won't, we won't go into the saga, but it's all fine. Now, Jake, tell me first of all about um, In Heart's Wake, because they're a very interesting metal band, I think. Is that the way to describe them? Yeah, um, metal band, or if you know your subgenres of metal, it's actually a metal core band. Um, but let's just call it heavy music. And yeah, it's 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 loud, it's heavy, it's melodic, and it's got a quite a strong following in the underground. Uh huh. Uh huh. And and are they based in uh, WA or where where are they based? No. So In Hearts Wake is from Byron Bay, um, oh, okay. Northern Rivers, New South Wales. Right. From there, and uh, born and bred. You know, like we will. Yeah, since the night, you know, the nineties, and. Yeah, from a small, tiny town that was not on any map. This is before Chris Hemsworth knew about it or anyone in the Avengers. And, you know, we used to just, yeah, play it, play at local youth centres and just whatever gig we could get, we would play. And, yeah, all of a sudden a, a hardcore scene. You know, that's called hardcore. It's like a, a punk hardcore. It's the style of music. Sort of started to grow in Byron Bay and before we knew it, there was actually international bands that, that would go, you know, play in Sydney, they'd play in Melbourne, but then they'd stop in Byron Bay on their way before Brisbane because it became so acclaimed that the kids would go crazy and the kids were just so into it and it just became famous. So through that, we got exposed and we started playing these shows in Byron with the local bands, um, supporting these huge international artists and thus birthed just the journey of In Hearts Wake till we found ourselves touring the world and uh, doing things that we never dreamed of, which is uh, which is quite a privileged position to be in. Uh huh. Very interesting to hear that. Well, well done on that. So now this is a film about this band in Hearts Wake and the environmental sustainability that is now an important part of the band and its touring. So tell me, Jake, how you and you co-directed this with uh, Caleb Graham, how you put together. Uh, how you decided to make a documentary and how you decided to put it together the way you have. Yeah, sure. So look, for starters, you know, why, why would a hardcore metal band be an environmental band? Um, the why often comes up. And when you hail from a beautiful place, such as the Northern rivers, you've got green Hills and, you know, abundance of water, waterfalls and oceans around you. You don't, uh, we started to realize how much that those places really nurtured and made us feel like balanced um as soon as we started touring the world and playing in you know the back streets of berlin and the back streets of brooklyn and new york and these quite culturally rich beautiful places but they also had like the underground where the socioeconomic like wasn't always you know high and there wasn't green pastures around you and so that that balance of like wow we started feeling out of touch with with nature out of touch with ourselves was recognized when we come home, thus spurred on the journey to want to protect and preserve and really like support um, that well, you know, the well being of our planet essentially. And so, yeah, we've been taking steps for the last, ever since our band's inception and touring internationally for the last 10 years, I guess you could say, 10, 12 years is like, what's the next thing that we need to do? Plant trees for records. Like, what can we do more mindfully? let's look into the elements, you know, step by step by step. And then we got to this precipice in the last four years where the next step to take was to go on this journey of going, well, how can we do things essentially waste free as best as possible? How can we make a record that doesn't cost the earth? How can we carbon offset the entire process and do the world's first carbon offset record? What does the world's first carbon, um, you know, neutral organization as a band, what is the world's, first band what like, is that possible and so with these journeys and things in mind it was hey caleb my one of my good friends between you and i do you want to see if we can document this and just see what happens and he was very up for the challenge and then through covid actually allowed us more time to sink our teeth more into this project and uh just yeah 
put a, put a microscope over everything. And here we are now when we've got a finished documentary and it's being received quite well. Well, it is a really interesting uh, a documentary and uh, um, it puts a new spin on the whole idea of uh, being environmentally friendly and uh, using a metal band to, to do that. Um, so tell me about your process in terms of planning, financing, putting together uh, the interviews. I mean, Damon Gamo is in it, I've noticed, and, uh, and uh, over the, that longer period of time, the decision making you went through in directing uh, Green as the mm. New Black. Yeah, it happened really organically. Like at first, it, it was there was never a let's make a movie and let's have it be this long. It was just we don't know what's going to happen. Let's document this because we are in new territory here. There's no rule book, there's no how to. So let's document it so that we can share what we learn as we go. And that might have been in the form of a five minute piece of content on youtube you know for all we knew we had no idea what kind of a journey we were on and it's it it, it started to like become quite evident that wow this is a pandora's boxy and there's a lot more that we're learning so fast but also it's being learned through conversation and in conversation it was it was reaching out to heidi lenfer she's a good friend of mine who has created this amazing solar initiative where artists can basically contribute money for their tours into a superannuation fund, so to speak, that's all investing in uh, solar power. And that then gives them a return back on the money they invested. And so through the organic, like, hey, hi, let's have a conversation to film it. Then all of a sudden she said, you got to speak to Damon, you got to speak to, and then it just spurred us off on this journey. And we just documented it all. Wow. So, so how did you film this with a with a single camera, uh, or did each of you do some filming, you and Caleb, or how how did then that uh, all uh, function? We well, as a band, we've always had ca uh, like cameras on on the road for the last you know twelve years, whether it's iPhones, little handy cams, or you know I've got a few decent cameras, Sony's and stuff. We always have stuff on the road to capture everything. With this, with the interviews, Caleb is a he's a he's a cinematographer, and luckily for us, Caleb has a a red you know red dragon camera, nice. and for the filmmakers out there that know they're quite quite good cameras. So mm -hmm. using the gear that I had and Caleb had, we were able to just have like a two man crew, and I was doing the interviews, and he's filming, and I've got the main camera like right next to me, just watching it to make sure it's recording, and he's doing the the second angle. And I'm running interviews and we had sound going over the top, you know, so it was just, just a two man operation really. And, and it's a lot of work, but it allowed us to have um, creative control and really know every shot and know all the details, less moving parts, so to speak. Okay. Oh, well, well done on that. I gather though, you would need some financing because there's some travel involved and, and uh, other aspects in the film that uh, would need some funding. So was that an issue at all? Funding, yeah, it was a challenge uh, for a little bit there because we had initially planned, you know, we would fund this as a band, but with all of our touring just getting right on the chopping block, which happens halfway through as we were creating the film, I then turned to just arts grants basically. And thank thankfully there are available, um, there are ones out there. and. It was actually the, the American Express Music Backers Fund um, was, was one of the ones that I was granted to help us comp uh, create this film. So I just cut out there for a sec. You're back. There we and um, so that was one. And then I had another that basically allowed us to make the, the music because this is an all original soundtrack that we as a band created. And so that was like this accompanying thing that we could do the music and the video and the band put forward like just so much of, of, of the finance that we could. And, you know, Caleb and I, because it is Caleb and I, we're not we're, like, we're doing, we edited it. We co-directed it. I produced it. We're not getting paid a lot. We're just really covering the expenses of, you know, petrol and um, any extra like bits of gear that we needed to get essentially. So we did it on a shoestring budget. Um, 
but it's still things do cost. Of course, <laughs> it's never cheap and easy to make a a film at all. And uh, so again, congratulations on persevering and getting it uh, completed. I'll come that back is. to the uh, yeah. I'll come back to the editing in a moment. I'm intrigued by how detailed the film is, looking at the way that carbon offsets and right. emissions were controlled and um, and uh, how sustainable um, the whole. Uh, travel and touring and the band etc was that was uh, that's a really painstaking process to be as carbon neutral uh, as possible it i found that really fascinating yeah i mean it's painstaking in that it's new ground and when you do new ground there's so much unknown so you don't often dig into everything but i think when you know where to look it becomes less painful and it's more just like you know whether you're doing your taxes and you just give it to your tax accountant, like they just do it, you know, you just keep your receipts. Um, so once you know what data to, to account to look for, and you've got people that can point in the right direction, it's not that painful. Um, but yeah, it meant we had to be meticulous because we, you know, we want to be as accurate as possible. Okay. Well, again, well done. And I think you said the, uh, the record that was created uh, is, is available and it's doing well. Yeah, yeah, the record Kali Yuga, which is a yeah, carbon offset record, and as the movie, and it's printed on recycled materials, that has done. It was not, yeah, it came in at number three on the Australian ARIA charts, number one Australian record in the country. Um, did really well. It was fantastic, and that now that record's been out for you know two years now, <laughs> which is crazy how time flies. <clears throat> but um, yeah. Look, we, we've only played five shows since that record came out still. So <clears throat> that's usually when you really get to taste the, uh, the, the, the moment and the experience and the success of a record is with your fans. <clears throat> and it did really well on a numbers side of things, but it's still, we still haven't really had those experiences that we would have liked to with that record. Um, but I hope hopefully with the, with the tour that's coming up very soon, we can, we can do that. Yeah. And, and you've certainly set a trend. I'm wondering how many other bands or musicians or other um, uh, entertainment providers will now follow uh, and use this uh, environmental sustainability as a key aspect of uh, producing records, music, whatever it is. Yeah, look, like there's been, uh, uh, there's already so much that's been happening. Hey, like, I don't want to name drop too much because I don't know if they all want to know. I don't, I don't know where they're at with their process, but let's just say, you know, Ari award-winning artists have had a few of them reach out to me, <clears throat> asking to watch it, asking what they can do. I've had the heads of some major labels as well, just being really interested to see the film because they, they heard wind of it um, just from word of mouth. Cause you can't watch it just anywhere yet. It's only been at film festivals, you know, and a few, few select screenings so um yeah uh just the people getting up in the audience um that have seen the film and saying i am the founder of this festival and as of next year i am implementing a a, a carbon offset like um how do i say it i'm i'm factoring into a ticket price because i have watched this film and I realize you have to be bold and you have to just go to not give people the option. It's just got to be what we do. You know, it shouldn't be a luxury that you tick. It should just be factored in whether the, the tickets just it's less or whether it's more, it doesn't matter. It just should just be, it's going to sell it anyway. People love festivals. So <clears throat> let them know what they're getting, but just, just factor it in. And so had someone come up and just declare that, you know, when it's a huge festival that sells tens of thousands of tickets. So we're seeing change happen, like just it's already happening. Yeah. Oh, congratulations on that, because that really has a, a set a trend or established something that uh, can permeate uh, the whole music community. So that's uh, yeah. well done. For, you yeah. should get royalties from all of that. <laughs> uh, now, that, that, this is the royalties that we can have a, a hopefully a more sustainable you know, music industry, like to do this. And we all seek the benefit, we all seek to get the rewards of that, which are royalties in themselves, you know, to be honest. Um, 
but yeah, I think to be the pioneers of anything, you have to, you've got to just, just be bold and take a risk and, and just admit that you might get it wrong and you, you may have gotten things wrong, like, but you did your best, you know, that's what trail trailblazing anything or being ahead of the curve is. You, you don't know what you're headed for and just, you know, <laughs> we're just doing the best we can, but we just, we're just artists giving it a shot, you know, giving it a go. And that's what we're always wanting to say. We are not experts at this at all. It's just through asking questions and we're learning more and more of what we could do better next time or add to, you know, our future journey here because uh, again, it's, it's all uncharted. Sure. No, I understand. It's, it's uh, uh, an exploration, which you're going through really well. Uh, in terms of getting uh, someone like Damon Gamow to uh, speak on camera, and uh, did he was he um, readily available? And did he also give you advice? Damon was phenomenal. He was so available. Um, I, I I realized Heidi Heidi, who's in the film, she's shared a few panels with Damon before. Damon lives in Byron Bay, like Bangalore, which is where we're from. So it was literally. Damon, Jake, Jake, Damon in a text. And I was like, Damon, this is what we're making, you know, metal band trying to go green, basically. Would love to interview you. And he just said when he was free and we just turned up. Um, that I, I could tell he was very, 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 very busy though, mind you. Like he was firing, you know, yeah, he's so busy, but he didn't, he was fully present and there with us and didn't make us feel like we had to rush what we were doing. Um, always giving me, yeah, giving me, he's, he's, he's epic actually, you know, like just texting with just, just, he's become a friend. Yeah. A really good friend giving me advice and just um, really encouraging me, you know, as a filmmaker, I think to just, just, just like props, you know, it's like, I, I see what you're doing and well done basically. And he still hasn't seen the film yet because every time there's a, there's a premiere on, He's premiering his film somewhere else. So we've been having this back and forth and we've actually set a date um, in two weeks to get together and uh, get a projector up on the, on the wall and, and I'm going to show it to him. I'm going to hang out afterwards. So hopefully he likes it. But even if he doesn't, he'll see the hard work that went into it. <laughs> <I hope. laughs> I'm sure he'll like it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, very good. Now, just a, a few other quick questions. Um, in with you and Caleb uh, making this film, and it's a very formative sort of film, as you're saying, uh, you were learning on the go uh, on as you were filming. Were there any particular other music documentaries or films that you had seen that maybe inspired your process or the look of the film? Um, I mean, because we interviewed Damon, we definitely were really aware of Damon's work as well, needing to be with 2040 because that was his, uh, what he was bringing to the table as an expert. And through watching 2040, I, we did really like how it was very solutions-based and quite hopeful rather than a doom and gloom climate crisis doco. So it'd be a lying if I didn't say that there was an inspiration to really, you know, tonally bring a little bit of that forward, um, for sure. Um, it's, it's worth mentioning that Caleb Graham's worked on one of the earlier Parkway Drive documentaries, which is a huge, they're a huge metal band and they won a bunch of arias for their documentaries. So Caleb brought a bit of his music doco background, like a, like a little bit. He, he didn't direct one of them, but he's helped edit it. So he had a bit of this sort of <clears throat> keeping it grassroots. Like we want to have live moments. We're having conversations in the room, you know, and I think the best band docos, even, you know, Metallica, some kind of spirit, oh, yeah. um, some kind of monster, I can't remember what it's called, monster, one of the two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, they just, they're some of the most engaging moments is just witnessing a band talk things out in a room. And so we needed those moments amongst the hopeful solutions, researching stuff and keeping it fun and having some comedy in there, you know? Uh, was really important to us because we are pretty silly as well. Like I know this stuff can get so serious that we can just get bogged down in the seriousness of it all. Then like, what's the point of it if we're not having fun? So we was trying to just balance those things out. And I think between 2040 and the music docos that we love, we could, we just found a nice balance. Yep. 
No, fair enough. I, I, I tend to agree. So let's let's talk about the editing process because that's where the film is really then finally constructed. Um, what decisions did you have to make, which would have been very difficult, I'm sure, about what to leave yeah. in, what to leave out in the final cut? Yeah, look, we wanted to keep it like with any story. We want to serve the story, and it's it is a it is a documentary around you know solutions within the music industry, right? That being said, as we just covered and documented a lot of stuff that went down, there are a lot of human moments that happened during the filming that are so relevant to what the what the I guess you could say the six of us were going through, the band and our tour manager, um, sound sound guy. And these stories were just highlighting to us, like, you know, just how when you're faced with such big obstacles, no matter, whether it is health, you know, whether it is, uh, we're not going to put your record in stores in, in it because, you know, it's, it's not wrapped in plastic. Whatever that obstacle, that mountain that was faced, there was a need and a desire to overcome and to want to rise above because we really believe and the heart is really in it. And I think these themes were just like, it was a dance between the two as editors because we don't want to have a, just a purely research docker. We need to have those fun elements and it needs to be about the band and the human stories. Mm. So find that, yeah, there was some stuff that had to get, you know, snipped on the floor. And we, we did consider going to the food element of things, but, whilst all band members eat and there is catering and stuff we just thought you know what there are so many food docos out there around this subject let's let's really be on the, the musician side of things here not the everyday person stuff um yeah i think structurally to be honest it was the hardest part structurally is just is uh having so much so much coverage over four or five years and just building it into into a neat and tidy structure when you don't actually know what the end is it's a challenge Absolutely a challenge and I fully understand. Well, the film will be screening as part of the Melbourne Documentary Film Festival uh, in July, which is fantastic. So uh, as you're saying, it's, it's, uh, it's hardly been seen, um, but you have submitted it, did you say, to film festivals? Yes, it's been, it's, it was at the Byron Bay Film Festival, International Film Festival, Bangalore Film Festival. It was at the uh, Northwest Film Festival in Canada. Um, it's yeah going to Melbourne um so yeah it's been selected at four film festivals and we had some like private <clears throat> private exclusive screenings in uh you know LA London Toronto Brisbane Sydney Melbourne Perth and Adelaide for our fans and like immediate people that we work with um at a record label and stuff to be able to attend these in very small like uh, intimate screenings mm -hmm. and so that was where we got most of our feedback and most of like the word of mouth just starting to sort of generate outwards. Very good indeed. And I'm sure it'll be rolled out even further um, very soon. Um, so I, I'm quite intrigued, Jake. Have you now got the spark to perhaps make another film? Make another film? That's, look, I, I didn't realise if I if I'd known how much work it goes into making a film, I don't know if I would have, geez, I don't know if I would have done it. <laughs> to be honest with you um that being said on the other side of it it is totally worth it so if there's a story that motivates and is really there if the heart is really in it then by all means the answer is yes i'd love to make another film um but i won't be as naive to know that it can't be done on a shoestring budget i need to put a lot of time aside and probably bring in some extra help because of a budget not do everything yourself so with those lessons being learned um and i wouldn't change a thing mind you yeah, I would like to know the film. Yeah. Okay. Well, good luck with all of that. And certainly congratulations on Green is the New Black, which is screening at the Melbourne Documentary Film Festival in July. And we've been speaking to the producer and co-director, Jake Taylor. Jake, thanks so much for talking with me. Pleasure. Thank you so much for making this happen. We, we did it. We nailed it. From Berlin no. to, <laughs> to Byron Bay. Let's go. Excellent stuff. Thanks again, Jake. All the best. Thanks and have a good night. Okay, you too. Bye-bye.